Samsung's Galaxy S4 has finally been revealed, but it looks quite a lot like the Galaxy S3. How exactly is this new phone different, and does it do enough new stuff to make it worth your money? First, the look. Not a lot has changed from the S3 in design terms. Visually, the S4 looks a lot like its predecessor, but it has a flatter shape and a neater, more uniform design. Samsung hasn't ditched the home button, opting to keep a mechanical key nestled underneath the S4 screen. The bezel surrounding the display has been slimmed down though, meaning you'll be looking at more screen and less plastic. The S4 is also both slimmer and lighter than the S3, despite being larger overall. Available colours have been given a shake-up, and while the S3 originally came in blue and white, the S4 comes in more traditional black and white, or black mist and white frost as Samsung puts it. The 4.8-inch 720p Galaxy S3 was no slouch in the display department, but the S4 takes things to the next level. It has a 5-inch 1080p Super AMOLED display, pixel density is dramatically increased from 306 ppi on the S3 to 441 ppi on the S4, and that means that on-screen text and images should look razor sharp. Samsung always goes big on bespoke software, and it's crammed the S4 with eye control features such as Smart Pause, which pauses video when you look away and resumes the clip when you look back. If that's not futuristic enough, you can control the S4 by hovering your hand over the screen. You can wave your hand in front of the phone to accept a call, for example. That's handy if you're driving as it goes into speakerphone automatically, though if you use it when you're out and about, you will just look like you're waving at your phone. There are lots of other new features too, like the power to use the S4 as a remote control and loads of health apps to try and keep you feeling healthy. The S3's camera had an 8 megapixel sensor, Samsung has bumped that up to 13 megapixels for the S4, as well as installing loads of new camera tricks. A dual shot mode that takes a shot with both the rear and front facing cameras is in play, and that combines the two shots into one image. The front facing snap will be placed as an inset, so you can see your reaction to taking a photo, as well as your subject. Sound and Shot is another camera feature and takes a picture with 9 seconds of accompanying audio. Drama Shot, meanwhile, combines burst shots into one image, giving you multi-stage action photos. Cinema Photo creates a GIF of a static image with selected bits of the picture continuing to move, while Eraser Shot removes people from your photos. Yikes. Exactly what kind of processor you'll find in the Galaxy S4 will vary depending on your region, with some countries getting a 1.9GHz quad-core Qualcomm processor and some getting Samsung's own brand 1.6GHz Exynos 5 octa-core processor. We'll need to perform our own tests before we know how much more powerful these processors are than the S3's 1.4GHz quad-core chip, but as there's not much out there that can push the current model to its processing limits, the S4 is certain to be one of the snappier smartphones out there. Finally, the S4 trumps the S3 by being 4G capable, so you'll be able to hook onto the 4G networks that are starting to spring up in the UK. So, lots of new apps, a slightly bigger screen and more power, but is that enough new tech? Do you think the S4 is a good enough update, or is it a bit too similar for the S3 for your tastes? Let me know your thoughts. I'm Luke Westaway, stay tuned to CNET for all your technology needs.